Oh, yeah. Right. Welcome, y'all. Thanks for coming back to another episode of the Fatcast. Today, I have somebody very, that you're going to enjoy this episode today. All right? I have somebody who I consider now um, my kind of like spiritual and holistic um, leader. You know, even me being, you know, in a position that I am of being a leader of people and helping everybody get to their physical and their, and their mental health goals, sometimes I need that extra push too. And Brian has become that guy for me that I go to for answers and I go to for help. And he's been doing very, very good at that. So just wanted to welcome him to the show today. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Come in. Thank you for Brian having me. Brian Phillips, he does a lot of amazing things in the community. Um, he's doing a lot of amazing things. And I just wanted to bring him in because this show is also going to highlight um, individuals who I feel like are, you know, making a major impact in the health and wellness, you know, arena. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, sir. I appreciate you, no good problem, brother. Keep Thanks love. for coming. Thanks for Keep coming. Love. Yeah. But first, you know, I just want to just do a quick toast. You know, I know mm -hmm. drink champs, they do, you know, alcohol, but we're here promoting health and wellness love, and, and fitness and, and health and everything like that. So we got, I got some watermelon. So no, no, you got the seeded, the seeded watermelon. watermelon. You got to make sure you have the, the seeded, seeded watermelon. All right. So cheers. Cheers, brother. All right. We're gonna keep eating a lot of this because it's gonna make too much noise in the, in the mm. microphone. But the food of the gods of the king, <laughs> man. Up. Yep. All right. So, tell us about yourself. What's your background? You know, how did you get started and all this? Just give us a quick one. Well, first and foremost, want to give you your flowers. Give you honor. Thank you so much for all you're doing. We're here at the Focus Ambition Lab. You know where you do a lot of great work for a lot of people. And so I just want to give you your flowers and say thank you for the work you're doing. Appreciate I encourage it. you to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And thank you for having me on the show. I oh, greatly man. appreciate thank the you. platform. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. And so a little bit about my background. I'm from Camden, New Jersey. Um, originally born in Yazoo City, Mississippi. Shout out to my family down in the zoo. The zoo. But um, I came to Camden when I was about two or three years old in between that time. So I'm a Camden native through and through. So my background is definitely in the city of Camden. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to college um, and in college, one of my professors told me um, during a sports marketing class, I thought I wanted to be an athletic director mm -hmm. or excuse me, I thought I wanted to be a sports agent. That was before the athletic director dream. And so um, he said, if you turn your avocation to your vocation, you'll mm -hmm. never truly work a day in your life. True. And so, you know, if you turn your avocation um, your hobbies, the things you do for fun, mm -hmm. and to your vocation, um, how you make a earning, how you make a living, then you won't truly, you know, have to quote unquote work. Right. So I thought about that. I said, man, where do my interests lie? What do I find a lot of fun in? What do I really want to do? And that led me to think about all the people that had great impacts on my life in Camden. And so um, that was coaches, that was teachers, that was drama instructors, that was with bookstore owners, people that really poured into me. And so I said, I want to make a difference. I want to be a part of the change I want to see. Right. And so my background for the last decade and a half has been education. Mm -hmm. um, I fancy myself a servant leader. A servant leader is one who puts the needs of others before their own. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that by way of um, working at my old high school as a guidance counselor and a, ba a baseball and basketball coach. I ran a, um, a, co a college program. Uh, called Rutgers Future Scholars for about eight or nine years, where um, I helped students and families tremendously. Mm -hmm. And um, outside of that, I coached various sports, basketball, football, um, had even my son participate in wrestling, boxing, yes. piano. So I was involved in them communities. Um, so definitely an advocate for um, those that are looking to improve their lifestyles, um, that want to get to the next level in their life. Yeah. So I spent um, the last decade and a half working towards that. And I would say uh, my background is just in serving leadership. Nice. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I know that I noticed something over the last, I would say, three or four years. I mean, it might be longer. But you've lost a whole lot of weight. You look amazing. You look like you're glowing. You just look like your energy just Crazy totally skin. changed. What, what made you really start, you know, taking your health a whole lot more seriously? What made you start incorporating fitness back into your lifestyle? Thank you for that, man. Thank you for noticing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for seeing me. Yeah. Um, I would say, so I never really stepped out of fitness. Even when I was heavier, I still was balling mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. still playing sports. I just carried the weight well. And yeah. I also have broad shoulders. So right. like, um, mm -hmm. I was definitely like wearing it and carrying it. Yeah. Um, but the thing, the turning point for me to actually take my health more serious, 
was when I knew I was becoming a father. Hmm. My son Teron, shout out to my son Teron Zion hmm. Phillips, love you boy, you already know. Yeah. Um, hmm. He really helped spark the change in me because I said, wow, I'm gonna be a father. Um, not only do I wanna be around long now, yeah. I also wanna have a high quality of life. And so with that being said, man, I gave up a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I actually doubled down on my spirituality. Um, I went celibate. Um, I gave up meat and dairy, um, snacks. Um, I would have a beer with dinner every night. I gave up drinking. Yeah. Um, I would indulge in uh, marijuana at the time. I gave mm -hmm. that up. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was the turning point. And so I noticed that once I started eating healthier, I had way more energy, yeah. I had a lot more energy. And then um, when I was on that route, I started uh, researching. And so I came across uh, the greats like Dick Gregory, uh, yeah, Dr. Gregory Sabi. Mm -hmm. And so man, I just like engulfed myself in their books and their YouTube videos, anything that I can find. I would yeah. stay up for days, literally just learning. Yeah. And I was so, um, my mind was blown that I hadn't learned this information. Mm -hmm. So man, I just spent a lot of time that's learning. Yeah. Um, two other books that are really good that helped me um, are African Holistic Health. Um, amazing books, man, that just shows, you know, our chemistry, our makeup, how we were designed, yeah. as opposed to how we kind of operate here in Western society. Mm -hmm. And so, man, reading and learning really helped me just make better choices. Yeah. And so, um, but my son definitely becoming the father, I was like, yeah. It was time. It's yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand, like, you, when you let things go, you make room for other things to actually. Yeah. Say that again for him. Right? When you let things go, you make room for other things. Yeah. And you can gain more. Yeah. You gain more by letting go. Oh, yeah. You know, and you gained a whole lot more life by letting go certain more th certain things. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to let go, y'all. All right. Because trust me, when you let go of things that you know are detrimental to you, you're making room, you're making space for things that's actually going to benefit you. You know, so that's a, that's a good point. And those books that you mentioned, I'll make sure I drop those links in the oh, description yeah. so people can can read them. So can you, can you just those two books that you mentioned. Um, so uh, Doctor Sabi's book, uh, I forget the name of it, but mm -hmm. African Holistic Health okay. is one. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a couple others, and yeah. I'll uh, send them to, to you. Me? Yeah, okay. I'll shoot them cool. to you. Cool. Okay. Now let's stay on the lines of you know we're talking about you know you making those changes. For your health and your and your wellness and you know because of the birth of your son which is a, a great why we everybody has to have a strong why mm -hmm. to make a change to make a difference and the son was but what did you notice what positive benefits on others did you notice mm -hmm. when you when you changed oh yeah so um man first and foremost um i believe like as men we have a tremendous responsibility in our families. Mm -hmm. I'm a very family oriented person, always have been since a youngster, and I continue that. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm even wearing the hat that says Natural Born Leader. Yeah. Shout out to Young DJ and shout out to Hav, Mind, Body, and Soul on the back. It says Find Your Gratitude. Yeah. And so, um, just plugging my people, man, that are doing positive things in the city mm -hmm. and, and helping foster the change that we want to see. Yeah. And so, um, being the leader, a natural leader of my family, um, I believe that I started to see people make better choices. One of my brothers, Shalil, he preaches every day that every day is a new opportunity and take advantage of an opportunity. Right. And so I can't lie, man, when I first came around, not eating them glizzies, not eating that fried chicken, <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. people looking at me sideways, yeah. like, yo, what you got going on? Right. I'm like, yo, put these, put these carrots and eggplants on the grill for me. Put this, yeah, put these yeah. bell peppers on the grill for me. Mm -hmm. uh, they looking at me like, man, what's going on with boy? But um, over time, right? Because discipline and consistency is key yeah. when we're trying to lead. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people in my family have made subtle changes. Right. And I just want to preface this by saying I'm far from perfect. Oh yeah. I'm mm -hmm. far from perfect. Like when on Thanksgiving time, and I shared with you before oh, yeah. with my yeah. aunt. <laughs> <laughs> my tea fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She make that that stuffing. I'ma grab me a corner. There's some, something you can't just <laughs> Yeah, something you gotta you gotta go against and just You know. Yeah, you know I'ma grab that yeah. burnt corner, man. She yeah. know how I like it. And um I'm gonna have that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna indulge, but I'm gonna get right back to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, because I know I'm making a conscious choice. I know it's not the best choice for me health wise, but I say, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna indulge for this moment, but I'm gonna get right back to it. Right. Right. And so um Life is about, it's about balance. True. 
Mm-hmm. And um, man, I can I can tell you like my cousins. I, I shout out to all my cousins, man. I'm really tight with all my cousins. Um, most of them are very young, way younger than me in their early 20s. But I see them changing their lifestyles, mm-hmm. changing the way they eat, or making you know a better conscious decision. Yeah. And it's not just when they're around me. You know, they might mm-hmm. hit me up, yo. I, I I saw what you posted, man. I'm not gonna be messing with that anymore. Right. Or when we out and we order and they see me getting the salad, they're like, you know what? I'll grab that today too. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I always say that small or incremental changes over time will have a big impact. Right. True. So I've, I've seen my mom, I've seen my mother cut down on her meat intake drastically. Yeah. Uh, make way more vegetables, buy way more fruit. Mm-hmm. And so um, personally, I ascribe to the, um, the Genesis 129 when God said, I will give you every seed bearing plant to be meat unto man. Like I take that. Yeah. literally mm-hmm. right and um even down to science like our teeth the way that they're made uh, i would say we have like teeth like horses like you know what i'm saying like right. they got the big mm-hmm. chompers like us um, we don't have what we call like canine, canine teeth. teeth right so mm-hmm. you know like tigers lions you mm-hmm. know jaguars they got them sharp teeth and they can cut through flesh yeah. so our body in my opinion is not designed to take on you know the flesh of animals yeah. but instead we can, God said he put us in the garden and of this garden eat freely. Right. And so we know we're growing gardens, mm-hmm. fruits, vegetables, herbs, nuts, yeah. seeds, berries, things like that. So yeah. um, that's what I ascribe to. And um, man, even my grandmother, my grandmother, man, she's been so consistent with this. Now, mind you, I'm half Mexican mm-hmm. and I'm I'm well, indigenous. And yeah. then also um, I have roots from African roots as well. That's a good combination of you know, wonderful me? food too. You know, I know. And people don't know, man. I'm 22 percent Nigerian. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and I, mm-hmm. I love my African cuisine. Yeah. Um, but uh, my grandmother, man, being indigenous, you know, pork is part of like the culture. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Man, my grandmother has stopped eating meat drastically, and every night, I don't know how for how long, but it's been a while now. She eats nothing but frozen blueberries and frozen grapes nice. every nice. night. Nice. Quick, quick note, man. My grandmother had diabetes, type two diabetic. She listened to some of the things I was um, imploring her to do. Mm-hmm. Now she's no longer um, diabetic type wow. two. Now she is what they call pre-diabetic, which yeah. just means she has to monitor herself. Mm-hmm. But she beat it. Wow. She beat it and it, just yeah. for making subtle changes. Yeah. And um, she did it. Mm-hmm. You could do it too. Yeah. My grandma's in her 70s now. You know, shout out to Linda Lou. That's my heart. I love you, my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, yeah, man, family, mm-hmm. friends. And even people on social media have taken notice and um, start to implement changes for themselves, which I'm, I'm, I'm proud to see, man. Not for me, but for them. Yeah, right. And that's the thing. We never know who's watching. Mm. People, people are watching your, your, your page without liking, but they're, yeah. they're following, yeah. you know? And that's why it's very important. Like if you decide to do something and a, a purpose and a work in your life, when you make that decision and, and you start to actually implore and start putting that message out there, it's very important for you to, to also stick to it too because it's people that's following you now. Mm-hmm. You know, and, when, and if you fall, you're the leader. Now they feel like, oh, if he's the leader, he can, he couldn't even do it. How can I? How can I possibly do this? Mm-hmm. You know. So it's, it's, a, it's a big thing to stay consistent, like you said, yeah. discipline with the, with anything that you choose to do. All right, very good. All right, next question. You're doing pretty good. All right, you're doing amazing. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Blessings, King. All right, so. Take me through your your daily wellness mm-hmm. routine. Like, what do you do every single day to keep you, you know, consistent and disciplined? Like we talked about, what are some things that you make sure that you do every single day? Mm. So, thank you for that question, man. Um, let me take you through what I call like the great eight habits, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, I'll just give you the eight, and I'll do other things outside of that. But I'll just go through the eight first, mm-hmm. and then. If there's time and space, I'll give a few more. Yeah. Um, but first thing first, I'm waking up early. You know, um, I believe that as melanated people, black and brown people, we have a direct relationship with the sun. And naturally, our body rises with the sun, mm-hmm. if not sometimes before. That's called the circadian rhythm. The circadian right? rhythm. Right. Mm-hmm. My boy's on mm-hmm. it. Shout out to you. you know, I research. I read. Yeah, yeah, man. A <laughs> yeah. Shout out to you. <laughs> yeah. So um, I like to rise early. I think I may have said wake up, but I try not to use that word. Mm-hmm. And one of my brothers be on me like, you say you don't use that, man. Be more <laughs> conscious. But yeah, I like to yeah. rise early. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes that could be 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. 
um, depending on the season, for real. Um, but I rise early. And I rise early because I want to get the most of my day. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a little known secret that if you rise early, let's say 5 a.m., and then from 5, let's say 12, that's uh, about seven hours or so. Right. But you have, that's a whole day's worth of work. Right. And then if you go from, let's say, 12 to about 6, that's going to be another day. Right. And then you can end the evening. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like, essentially, you can break your one day down into two or three days. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so I've been noticing that I have more time for things mm -hmm. because I get up earlier. Right. And so number one is wake up early. Number two is something I call PMS. I want to change the narrative of the PMS, right? Mm -hmm. We know that to be something that's very irritable or right. not mm -hmm. feeling too good. You don't have a, it doesn't have a positive uh, connotation. Right. But my PMS is prayer, meditation, and stretching. So as soon as I wake up, the first thing I'm doing is praying. I'm expressing gratitude to God for the, a new day, yeah. for keeping me safe, um, for no bad news coming through, for mm -hmm. no robbers breaking in. Yeah. For me still having this bed, this mm -hmm. roof over my head, having food upstairs, I'm just expressing gratitude to God, just right. thankfulness. Mm -hmm. um, that's very important to me. And then I meditate. Um, meditating is just connecting with your breath. It's stealing your mind, stealing your body, just so you can be in a state of relaxation and calmness. Mm -hmm. And science even says that if you meditate upon waking up, excuse me, upon rising, that your brain will function at least 70% better for that day. So if you give yourself 10 to 15 minutes yeah. upon rising, mm -hmm. you want to sharpen your brain 70% at wow. least for that day. And so I love that. And then um, I stretch. I get my body movement, like moving. Movement is key, right? Because illness, sickness cannot, it can only stay in a body that's not in motion. As right. soon as we start moving, mm -hmm. getting our energy flowing, yeah. moving our nadis, moving our energy centers, you know, mm -hmm. that those things can pass through. Yeah. And so um, big propon a big, um, I'm always encouraging people to get movement going. Right. Um, right after that, I do a light exercise. So the third thing is a light exercise, whether it's calisthenics, um, whether it's just uh, hitting the pull-up bar, doing some dips, my push-ups, mm -hmm. um, light things. Um, if you want to take a light jog around your neighborhood, yeah. go for a quick run, something light just to get the body moving. Right. Get to start sweating, getting out some toxins. Um, and then right after that, I break my fast. Uh, well, excuse me, before I break my fast, I have a to-do list. Mm -hmm. So um, that's number four, create a to-do list. This allows me to see all my agenda items for the day, and it gives me an opportunity to prioritize. Yeah. Right? So I know I have to do at least these top five things today. And that's that train y'all that y'all always hear mm -hmm. all our videos. This train goes by every 10 minutes, so that's part of the show now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. They need to uh, be a sponsor. Yeah, they do. That's good. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> River line. <laughs> Holla at us. Um, so, yeah, man. So, I'm doing that. And then um, after I do my to-do list, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get things done. And then I don't break my fast, which means I don't put nothing in my temple, in my vehicle, in my body until at least 11 or 12 noon. That's when the sun is at its highest point, right. and I know I'll be able to digest better. And um, it's a lot of things going on energetically that we can't see. Yeah. Um, the sun is letting go a lot of phytonutrients, so that's feeding us as well. And so, yeah, I like to eat when the sun is at the highest point. And so, those are the first five. Yeah. Those are the first five things. And then, um, you know, then I, I'm busy. I'm doing my stuff. And then um, the last three. Um, after I've been accomplishing all that I had to do, I met my marks, you know, I came, I met with people, I was productive, mm -hmm. got some good work in. Um, I like to do uh, something creative. I like to do something creative, mm -hmm. at least an hour um, before I go to bed. So whether that's writing, journaling, creating a poem, mm -hmm. uh, creating a rap, yeah. um, thinking about uh, new ideas for my book, just being creative. Some people like to dance, sing, create scripts for movies, just mm -hmm. we are creative beings, right? right? We were made by the ultimate creator, so we have creativity that's endowed in us. So right. being creative just to exercise um, those talents. Uh, one thing I spoke about that is um, we were born on purpose for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And so um, part of our purpose could be our talent, yeah. how we're creative. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you have to use that. You have to use it. God gave it to us 
gave it to us for a reason. Yeah. We have to exercise that. Yeah. And so um, right before that, oh, you had you want to say something? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. just to touch on what you're talking about, what God gave everybody a specific purpose. Oh, yeah. Right? He gave, oh, I say this to people all the time, God gave everyone something, but he didn't give everyone every, mm-hmm. everybody everything. Mm. All right? The reason why he did that is because so that we all need each other. Oh, yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. Whatever he gave you, somebody else is going to need, and whatever he gave someone else, you're, you're possibly going to need. Oh, yeah. He gave us all a gift, but he didn't give us all the same gifts. And the reason why is because that way we can, we have to work together. We'll need mm-hmm. each other. It's the reason why there's so many people here on this planet, and we're supposed to utilize each other. We're supposed mm-hmm. to work together. We're supposed to feed off each other's energy, you know? So I just want to touch on that. Oh, man, I like yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, number seven is um, I get a good meal in mm-hmm. and I try not to eat after a certain time, whether it be 7, 8, 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. Just try to shut the body down after that. So I'll try to get my one big meal in for the day. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be more fruits. It could be vegetables. It could be a big salad. Mm-hmm. You know, you can eat as much as you like. You know? Right. As uh, long as you don't eat at least two hours or four hours four before hours, bed, four mm-hmm. hours before bed. Um, before you go and take it down. So eat a nice meal. And then the last thing is to get ample rest. So um, try to go to sleep early uh, so that you can get at least your six to eight hours. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Those are my um, my great eight. And then also um, in the morning, part of my morning routine, you know, of course, I brush my teeth, but I do something called tongue scraping. Oh, yeah. I have a yeah. tongue scraper. My I do. Wife, my wife does that. Oh, yeah. Morning, right? I see trying, I'm, I'm gonna get on it. Yeah, I yeah, see yeah, her yeah. doing it's, it all the time. So yeah. beneficial, man. So beneficial. The tongue scraping, the oil pulling. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Coconut oil. You swish it in your mouth for 15 to 20 minutes, and yeah. then make sure you spit it outside. Don't put it down your drain or in the trash can. Spit it's it outside. Toxins, right, because it yeah. becomes like this white, gooey type. Well, I haven't seen that. Right? For me, it just comes out like with uh, more um, spit and yeah. the coconut, mm-hmm. and so it, that doesn't kind of change for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just know that it'll clog the drains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Try to put it in a trash can to make a mess. Yeah. So like, I just go outside and spit it out in the dirt or the grass, okay. mm-hmm. right? And um, so that's really essential. And then flossing, you know, mm-hmm. flossing, man. Um, your mouth and your gum health is really important. Yeah. You know, we are in people face all the time. We're mm-hmm. always speaking, talking, yeah. have these engagement. And um, all these things actually help your gums and they actually make your teeth stronger and right. wider as well. True. And so that, that's one thing I like to promote as well. Wonderful. You just mentioned speaking. Mm-hmm. All right. I know that you, that's one of the things that you do on a regular basis. You're going around the community center speaking to youth about, you know, you said it was suicide prevention and just mm-hmm. health and wellness. and, mm-hmm. and um, What's what's your purpose when you go out to you know speaking? What's your, what's the message you're trying to get out? Yeah, when you're doing all these speaking engagements. Yeah, um, man, God has blessed me. God has blessed me to um, just be a light. God has blessed me with experiences where I can relate to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been through circumstances that you know a lot of our children, our kids, our people in inner city have been with, mm-hmm. have, have dealt with, have been in, and so man, I'm very relatable. And then also, um, I look people in their eyes, man, so I can look at someone and see kind of what they're going through. And I'm very uh, empathetic. Um, you know, I feel what other people feel at times as well. And so man, I do a great job or God rather has blessed me to do a great job to kind of connect with people, build mm-hmm. rapport. And so um, I can go to a room full of people um, that I've never met and just by our, the time that we share together by the end, man, like we're, we locked in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, um, Man, one of the one of my first things, the first things I tell anyone and I get an opportunity to speak in front of, I say, you know, you were born on purpose for a specific purpose. That like you have value, you're unique, you mean something, and that um, you're here. You're here to do a job. You're here to do a job. Like God created you for a reason to do something great in this earth. And uh, I just remind them of that. Right. I just remind them of that. Some people have never heard that this iteration or this time around. But, you know, I think deep in their heart, they know that. So I'm just trying to serve as a reminder for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's number one. And um, the second thing I try to leave them with is um, the tool. And I say, yeah, I'm giving you these tools that you can put in your swag bag and take them out mm-hmm. and use them whenever mm-hmm. you want. Yeah. Um, and so meditation is one of those things. Mm-hmm. Meditation is just being able to connect the breath, connect the mind, the body and the spirit and just have it as one and just, um, really give yourself a sense of stillness and peace. Yeah. 
And um, meditation is a tool that has helped me tremendously and it continues to because I do it every day. Yeah. And so um, meditation, so I show them meditation practices, do a little stretching, some yoga with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the last two things I tell them to put in their swag bag is um, to create gratitude lists, you know, what I'm grateful for. And I do exercises around that. And then an the affirmation list and the affirmation is very important because, you know, I implore them to every day, look yourself in the eyes, mm -hmm. in the mirror, and tell yourself truths, reaffirm yourself. So, you know, I look in the mirror, I say, Brian, you are strong. Brian, mm -hmm. you are loving. Brian, you are kind. Brian, you are brave. Brian, you are unique. Brian, you have vision. You know, Brian, you are healthy. Brian, you are wealthy. I tell myself all these positive things to reaffirm myself. And I don't need the world tell me these things because I'm telling myself these right. things. Mm -hmm. And if someone else tells me that, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm going to take that in with love. But as long as we're building ourselves up, and I think these four things allow individuals to kind of embrace who they are and try to move forward in the best way possible. True. You know, I think that like the, when you talk about affirmations, and I don't think people sometimes understand the true power of words. Mm. Like words are very powerful. Mm. Like it's very um, important that you Really be mindful of how you talk to yourself. Yeah. Those internal things that you say to yourself. Because if you don't know how powerful a word is, go ahead and like just think about a time somebody says something to you that that, that you didn't like. Mm -hmm. And imagine just think about how that made you feel. Right. So those words that that person said to you made you feel a certain way. So those words have power, enough power to make you feel bad or feel good. Mm -hmm. All right. So just reiterating what you're saying about the mm -hmm. affirmations, the positive affirmations, telling yourself. You can do it. My, my affirmations I say to myself is uh, I'm well, mm. I'm wealthy, mm. I'm healthy, and I'm happy. I repeat those affirmations before I go to bed. I repeat those affirmations when I get up. And I literally see my mood lift mm. because, you know, I'm telling myself those, those specific things over and over again. You know? Praise God for that. Yeah. Keep doing it. Every day. Keep doing it. Every day. Keep doing it. Yeah. So, lastly, mm -hmm. you know, we're about to get out of here. Me and you talked a little bit about. Oh, yeah, you want to take another? Well, I'm shameless, man. I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Delicious, y'all. Make sure you get the watermelon with the seeds. Don't play around with that. All right. But <clears throat> you talked about a uh, 14 day um, cleanse mm -hmm. that you that we we're gonna do together. Oh, we're yeah. actually gonna document this, y'all, a day to day thing because I feel like I need to you know purge some things from my body, like I, what I told Brian. I feel like I've, I have this last 10 to 15 pounds that mm -hmm. I want to get off, but I feel like once I lose that weight, you know, it's going to also lift me spiritually. Oh, yeah. And it's also going to just lift a lot of different, you know, negative things that I have going on as well, too. So doing this spiritual, I'm, it's, I'm considering this a, a oh, spiritual yeah. cleanse oh, yeah. that I want to do. But of course, I'm going to let you take the lead in that because I feel like you're a leader in that space and I'm Praise just happy to have you at my disposal. So can you just give them an idea of what it's going to be about? Yeah, yeah. Praise God, man. So grateful that you said, you know, you want to do this because um, I'm feeling like it's time for me to do one as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're going to do a cleanse, mm -hmm. right? We're going to do a cleanse and we're going to document it. And um, like you said, like cleansing is spiritual. It's spiritual because what you're doing is getting things out your body, out your temple to, like you said earlier, to make room, mm -hmm. to make room. And um, it's really good to pack lightly. It's really good to mm -hmm. pack lightly, right? Because um, some people even take it a step further and they are like literal minimalists so they may have like three outfits two pair of shoes mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. small house mm -hmm. and just like small car like they mm -hmm. really pack light in the earth and so um i really believe that our body is our temple um this vehicle was a gift right it's a gift from the most high god and so we have to take care of it now in other countries they do cleanses three, four times a year, maybe every three months or so. Mm -hmm. But in the West, you know, we're not accustomed to that. Right. And so, man, we want to make that the norm. We want to make that the norm where we're always cleansing. We're always trying to purge our body to make room for the beautiful things that are in the earth. And um, there's a saying that you are what you eat. And sometimes we don't make the best choices because what's around us, right? right. For mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons. But on the road to try to, you know, increase our mental wellness, our mental well-being, or our overall well-being, rather. 
you know, we have to start making conscious choices and decisions. And so this was timely for me as well, yeah. because I've, I've been feeling like I'm ready to do another one. Mm -hmm. And so this one is going to be, um, we're actually, I think it might be 14 to 16 days because it's okay. 32 ounces. We're going to do the global bitters. Um, so that's uh, an amazing tonic that has 20 plus, <laughs> excuse me, 20 plus herbs, um, all type of herbs in mm -hmm. there, man. Um, everything from ginger to ginseng. Uh, what else they might have up in there? Some dandelion root, mm, um, some it. sarsaparilla, mm -hmm. um, all types of different chlorophylls in there. Um, but the global bitters is really powerful. I've done it before and it clears you out. Yes. It clears you out. And mm -hmm. so um, what we'll do is we'll take one ounce in the morning and then one ounce at night. But throughout the day, we'll be eating clean or like what I say, eating organic. So we we'll eat uh, you'll break fast, you know, when you when you want to break fast. I'll probably break fast like around tw 11 or 12 noon. Yeah, that's what I have to be able to do now. Like, yeah. yeah I usually eat my last meal like around 4 or 5 o'clock. Oh, I need to get on. I need to get on yeah. with you on. But I've noticed a, such a major difference yeah. since I started doing it. I've been doing it consistently now like the last, I would say, six months. Mm. You know, I just, I just, my body feels different. My body is just shaping out perfectly how exactly how I want it. Energy levels is like crazy, yeah. you know, and everything. I just feel overall better just by, you know, stopping my eating at a certain point. And just, I do like, on an average, I do about 18 hours a day. Oh, that's amazing. Between 18 to 20 hours of fasting every single that's, day. That's intermittent fasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, man, when you intermittent fast, you allow your body to get rid of so many free radical cells and yeah. so much mm -hmm. toxins. Like, you're really doing yourself a great service when yeah. you do intermittent mm -hmm. fasting. For all my people out there, look up intermittent fasting. If you're on um, one of his clients, look into the benefits of that. They know all about it. They just don't. They just shun me for it. Yeah, I'm talking to all. Take like, heed. I know who I'm talking to. Take heed. I tell them to put down a fork. They want to kill me. Ah, <laughs> man. Yo, America eats. Yeah. America eats. Does, That's for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. America eats. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that, and then uh, making healthy um, choices and decisions throughout the day, mm -hmm. because what we want to do is. We're going to be purging. So you want to put into your body things that's going to help rebuild it. Mm -hmm. So personally, I'll probably eat um, all the berries because the berries are uh, very high in oxygen. They call it antioxidants. Yeah. And so um, that's your blueberries, strawberries, raspberry, blackberries. I'm going to load up on those. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'll probably have some cedar grapes, mangoes, yeah. um, papaya. Even papaya seed is mm -hmm. really good because it helps you. Don't eat too many papaya seeds at once. Mm -hmm. you know. But um, I'll have a few papaya seeds with it. I love Chinese apples. I love beets. Like mm -hmm. all those yeah. colorful fruits, man, are amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably be loading up on that and I'll probably have like a big salad. And when yeah. I say salad, I just mean like all the greens. Mm -hmm. So like your, your spinach, your kale, your lettuce, your purple lettuce, um, cucumbers, man, mm -hmm. cucumbers and watermelon are, and coconuts are probably the three most hydrating fruits on the planet. Yeah. And one thing um, I also said, uh, we want to drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. I personally drink spring water. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best for me. Um, but also Celtic or Celtic salt. It's just like the Celtics are spelled, but sometimes they use a K. Yeah. And um, it's with that sea salt. So you want to take one small granule, eat it, chew it down, and then have eight ounces of water or half a water bottle. And you can do that three, four times a day. And mm -hmm. that'll help you to rehydrate your cells from a cellular level. Okay. And so... Um, most times when, when you're fasting, you might get headaches or feel hungry or woozy and drowsy. Mm -hmm. Doing this will help you remineralize re your body. And so I'm always, you know, promoting the Celtic or Celtic salt um, as it aids, it aids and, and helping the body get all that it needs. Okay. Um, so yeah, other than that, we're going to weigh ourselves first. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a lot of different herbs in my herb cabinet, probably mm -hmm. 50 to 60 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm on that journey mm -hmm. of uh, herbalism. And so um, I also sell like herbal teas and things like that. So I'm going to be drinking. You do the sea moss water uh, yeah. and all that stuff too, right? Yeah, so yeah. I have the sea moss. I do smoothies, sea moss smoothies. Um, I sell the seeded grapes. I sell hair oil. Um, beard oils and everything is all natural, all yeah. organic. So I'm on that wave. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So uh, I'll be I'll be having plenty of sea moss mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Plenty sea moss is going to be heavy, and I love the purple sea moss. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. So um, I'll probably be having about four to eight ounces of that every day. Okay. Um, and that just helps with energy. Like we're active. Right. You know, we're mm -hmm. still going to be working training, out, working training. Out, we got ball. basketball. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so um, we're still going to be very active. 
And so eating this way will give us the energy that we want and energy that we need. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out. I'll tell you a quick story. (laughs) So um, the first time I did Global Bitters, probably like in 2017 or 2018, around that time, man, I was um, coming around the end of it, right? I probably was on day like 14 or 15. And I went to the bathroom and man, something came out of me that had me looking in the toilet for about three <laughs> minutes. And I was like, how, why, and what, what is, yo, you feel mm-hmm. me? And then um, what I came to understand, cause I wasn't really deep into the knowledge. I was just like mm-hmm. getting the books and learning, but I was like, you know, the spirit knows. Mm-hmm. And so like, I needed to do that cleanse. And at that time I may have been fasting with the brothers from St. John's, if I remember correctly. And so man, I was eating properly and, mm-hmm. and doing the uh, global bitters. And man, I passed through, I would say like some type of parasite, man, wow. a huge parasite. Wow. Like I'm talking huge. I, I couldn't believe it came out of me. Yeah. And you know, some of these parasites, they're living entities. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when you get hungry, when you get irritable, when you say, I need something salty, something right. sweet, something crunchy, right. it's not it's you. Not yeah. It's those entities in your body talking mm-hmm. about feeding me, Seymour. Right. And so um, <laughs> you feel me. And so, um, <laughs> yeah. yo, I, I, Edron came out of me and I was just like, in shock really mm-hmm. i was in shock like i was in shock for a few minutes and um that was the first time i'm like wow this is deeper than i know right mm-hmm. and so if something does pass out man i would document it. if i like i knew mm-hmm. what i knew now i would have documented it and showed mm-hmm. it to like one of my brothers who's a doctor shout mm-hmm. out to dr Nikhil, my great brother right there solid mm-hmm. saint soldier a warrior right there yeah. and um you know i would have definitely got some insight on mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm really heavy in the philadelphia community with the yeah. yoga community and mm-hmm. people that really care about their bodies and so i would have had some documentation to show and yeah. get some answers mm-hmm. but at the least it could have been like cancerous cells but non-cancerous cells or you know a parasite but right. i definitely helped myself by doing that cleanse. wonderful okay well y'all heard it here this is what we're going we're to be doing like you said, we're going to be documenting it. We're going to see it uh, 14 to 16 days. We'll make sure that we are very transparent about everything that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and afterwards, you know, we're going to see our results. And if any of you are interested in doing it, we will be doing something to for with a group of people mm-hmm. um, who are looking to really cleanse and really do something that's going to really lift and open your spirit. All right. Because it's really not sometimes it's not all about just the things that you're going to see on the outside is really about what's going to happen on the inside of you what's going to happen with that invisible you know portion of your body that portion of yourself that really controls everything yeah. all right so yeah. i'm looking forward to doing it yeah really man. Am, man but thank you for coming oh, on thank I you appreciate it bro thank you so much really i appreciate good. you for having looking forward to doing this yeah you know, I, I, like i said i feel like this is kind of like going to be the uh, the awakening that i that mm-hmm. i need you know you and me both yeah. brother appreciate you brother peace and love all peace right. and love king this is the fat cash y'all we'll be back with another episode Coming soon. Peace and love. This will be dropping. I'm not gonna tell you when, but you'll see. So, all right. Be on the lookout. Peace out. Stay on purpose. All right. Love. Keep health and wellness in the forefront of your mind. All right. And everything else will fall into place. And remember, I, I, I was ready to get back. <laughs> to this. I ain't gonna hold you. See the watermelon. All right. You out.